In this video, we're going to talk about how do Forex brokers make money? Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so have you ever wondered how your Forex broker, your spread betting broker makes money? Let's explore that right now. Well, reality, they should be called dealers, not brokers, because they're not facilitating a trade to a centralized exchange. But nevertheless, we all know what we're talking about. So how do these guys make money? They've got big infrastructure costs, technology costs, offices, staffing costs, marketing costs, yet they still seem to make decent profit. A lot of them do. How do they do it? Okay, the first thing is, the first one is, is the spread. You know, we've got the spread um, and that's generally in pips if we're talking about a currency pair or it's going to be in points if we're talking about an index if we're spread betting. And that could be, you know, half a point, could be 10 points depending on what we're trading. But how do they make money from that spread? Well, first of all, you've got this guy here who's a trader. I think he's got the shortest legs in history. Let's pretend he's got shorts on, shall we? <laughs> you get the idea. He thinks GBP USD is a short, so he decides he wants to sell 50, whatever that may be. I'm going to just use the word 50 or the number 50 for now. That could be 50 pounds a point, could be 50 lots, could be 50 million. It doesn't really matter. It depends on how the broker actually you know, packages that, the position sizing. So let's say he sells 50 units of GBP USD. He goes to his broker, who's sitting here in the middle, or dealer probably is the better terminology. Let's use broker for now. And the broker says, yeah, no problem. Let's say 50, you can go 50 short on GBP USD. He then sends that back, allocates that to his account. This guy is now 50 units short GBP USD, makes money if GBP USD cable goes down, loses it if it goes up. Okay, now the problem you've got here is that the broker is now exposed to this guy's position. If cable goes lower, the broker is going to lose money. He's going to have to pay money out from his company to this guy's personal account. But then vice versa, obviously if cable goes up, the broker is going to have money transferred to him from his client. Not advisable, not great, not, not a fantastic position to be. You know, you're doing a taking the opposite side of someone, uh, you know, each side. So we'll have on the other side of the coin, we've got, uh, let's say we've got now three other traders. We've got Bill, we've got Bob, and we've got Ben. And why don't we call this guy Barry for easy uh, allocation. So Bill suddenly says, you know what? I think cable is a buy. I'm going to buy 10 lots. Bob's does the same. And Ben says, I'm going to buy 30, 30, 40, 50. So now the broker is actually market neutral. He's got no net exposure to GBP USD. He allocates the 10 to Bill, 10 to Bob, 30 to Ben, 50 out there, 50 there. He is just perfectly hedged and he's making the spread in between, whatever that may be. He's making one pip on 50 units. And can you imagine if you had many hundreds of clients like this on both sides, all of a sudden that spread is going to be reasonably significant and it's going to make the money in between. And let's not forget, guys, that you know the headline rates that we get for Euro USD, GBP USD, they're very tight, they're very uh, competitive, and that's just to attract volume. You know, the, these guys just want volume flow, as you can see. The more volume coming in, the better. Uh, but when we get to more of the exotic pairs, that's when it becomes a little bit more expensive. You get higher, higher, higher spreads, and the broker's going to make more money. But it doesn't end there, does it? Because we have a situation where there will be a zone. And if I use a red pen, a red pen is probably going to suit this better. There will be a zone where the broker is comfortable with exposure. So in other words, he will have an area. Let's say, I don't know what this level would, is going to be a commercial decision for the broker. But let's say, for example, you know, in, in the middle, you've got zero. So net exposure is zero. That's what that would be. 50 netted off with these 50 longs, 50 short. And let's say it goes up to plus 500. Uh, on minus 500. I've no idea whether that's too much or too little. I don't know what, it, again, it's a commercial decision based on the size of the company and the product probably that they're trading. So within that range, the broker is happy to take the other side of people's trades because he knows that over time traders are going to lose money. So for example, if you know someone else comes in here, like Dave comes in here and he sells, oh sorry, he buys, these guys are going long, right? Don't forget these guys are going long and he buys you know 200 lots. That's going to leave him exposed to 200 because it's not going to net off perfectly but while it's within his parameters he's quite happy that's going to sit around about here isn't it on the on his chart he's going to say you know what it's within my parameters that we've pre-calculated our risk tolerance level again that's going to be different for, for pound usd as it's going to be for you know some sort of some kind of stock or something 
if they're trading uh, like a spread betting firm. So he's going to take, broker's going to take the other side of the aggregate position of traders up to a certain level because he knows that traders ultimately lose money over time. And that really is going to work out well for him. However, he's got to be careful. He can't go crazy. You know, if, if Dave comes in and he sells, you know, 2,000 units, he can't take on 2,000 units of exposure because it's going to bring him outside of his model, isn't it? He's going to be, all of a sudden, he's going to be exposed outside of his position. It's going to be at the 2,000 level. So what he does is he, is he hedges that in the underlying, the extra that takes him out of his comfort level of exposure. So that's really what happens uh, in terms of how brokers make their money from the spread. And don't forget, guys, we have a situation also where, you know, you've got GBP, USD, you've got USD JPY, and you've got, uh, let's say you've got GBP uh, JPY as well. Now, there may be independent positions on all of these, and I can carry on, and I can include Euro in this, I can include all the majors and crosses. Uh, there's gonna be a net exposure to either USD, or a net exposure to Euro, a net exposure to Pound, a net exposure to each individual currency. So they're not gonna have to, he's not gonna have to hedge just purely based on GBP USD here. The broker's going to look at what's the exposure to euro usd okay well actually now what's my exposure to euro and triangulate it all round to give himself a net exposure and then decide which where he's going to hedge in the market when he goes outside of his parameters so that's that one and don't forget as well that with companies like the only one that i'm aware of is intertrader which won't trade against you they actually take the trade Let's scrub it out and show exactly what the, the strategy is with these guys. A pretty unique model, actually, and, and uh, uh, nice for us to know that they're not trading against us. They will take the trade. Let's say they'll take uh, who we've got here, Barry's trade, and they will then s pass that risk on uh, by selling that amount into the underlying. Now, bearing in mind, Barry can trade a very small amount of size, so they probably can't go right into the big banks and just trade 50 lots because the minimum is probably 50, you know, 500 or whatever it may be. But they'll have a liquidity provider there who they have done a deal with and they'll basically are taking a spread in between. So the liquidity provider may give it to them for, you know, a tenth of the amount as they're charging Barry, which is fine because he's got all the all the all the kind of bells and whistles that go behind it and he's allowed to trade small size but they will go to the liquidity provider they will offset that straight away so they then have no risk in the trade it's great for barry because barry then is not the broker's not hoping he loses you know the broker into trader in this example is saying okay you know what we want Barry to win because it doesn't matter for us. If Barry wins loads of money, it's fine because we've hedged ourselves off. We've just passed the money we've made from our liquidity provider from our position we've offset straight through to Barry. Yes, we make a little bit of spread in between, but that's fair, that's just commercial business, right? So they're encouraging Barry to make good trades, better trades and stay in the game longer rather than some other brokers who just want Barry to just go crazy, blow up and take the money because they've got a commercial interest in him losing money. And the final thing, guys, is the number two, is of course the financing you know overnight rates uh for holding positions that's how the brokers are going to make a little bit of extra cash as well if barry's holding positions overnight and depending obviously the interest rates we won't go into you know how they're calculated i've done another video on that uh, before uh, if you've subscribed you go and check it out or consider doing so if you haven't yet already subscribed but there's going to be an overnight financing rate so the longer they hold a position the more barry have to pay to potentially hold that position or if he's holding a short position he'll receive money but they're going to take a cut in between the middle based on what they're paying out and what they're getting in on the financing rate overnight for the longs and the shorts and against the liquidity the extra kind of hedging that they're taking from externally to give them within their metrics so that's how they make money generally and it works well for most brokers which is why we've got to pick a broker really if we can like intertrader that doesn't trade against us because then they've got our best interests at heart so check them out we'll stick a link in the comments section below or in the description section below if you haven't yet already i know many of you are, are trading them with them currently and are happy with them which is all good anyway guys like this kind of stuff give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet already and i shall see you in the next one take care keep the risk managed goodbye